Hello, this is Keon Robinson again, and I'm going to show you how to retopologize a high poly mesh in 3D Studio Max. What you're looking at right now are the pair of lips I've sculpted. Um, the sculpt started from a very simple mesh. It was just a box with a bunch of edges in it. And I'm going to show you how to make a low poly mesh from this high poly concept. As you can see here, I'm going through the subdivision showing you how it started off extremely simple and then worked its way up into something fairly decent. The reason you want to retopologize is for many reasons. A lot of re time people just want to retopologize so they can get finer detail around certain areas of sculpting. But for today, I'm going to show you how to retopologize for animation purposes. As you saw, this was made from one mesh, so there's really not any edge loops to support these lips if it was time to animate. As you can see, I'm trying to pull up the top lip, but I'm also getting the bottom lip. Now you might be saying, hey, why don't you just mask the bottom lip and bring up the top lip? Well, luckily for us, ZBrush has a brush that kind of helps us do that if the topology wasn't directly connected. However, since the topology is directly connected, you're going to see a bit of stretching on both ends. And this brush that I'm using for this example is the Move Topo Logical Elastic Brush, or Topo Elastic Brush. And as you can tell, there's no gap in between those lips. So this brush won't do the job as expected. And this is why we're going to retopologize this mesh in order to actually make it animatable and use it for any purpose that you need it, whether that be a game or just for more high poly rendering or what, what have you. And also, since it was this ZBrush, we could carry over the high poly info to the low poly mesh such as normal maps, displacement maps, or color maps. As you can tell, I've already poly painted this, so it has some somewhat natural colors. I also put in a mole for the sake of asymmetry. First things first, uh, make a clone of your mesh. That way you won't mess up the one you're working on accidentally. And go over to Decimation Master. Depending on how many polygons your mesh has, Decimation Master might take a while to pre-process what you're trying to do. But um, I went ahead and did that, so now I'm just going to type in the amount of polygons I need. I put in 25,000 just to make an example later on. You don't need 25,000, but I put it in there anyway. So as you can see, the mesh is decimated, and a lot of times you won't really see the difference until you turn on the wireframe viewpoint. So as you can tell, there's a bunch of crunched up triangles. And as dirty as it looks, this is actually a lot easier to work with within 3D Studio Max. So we hit the Go Z button, and two seconds later, it's dropped in the Max. Same mesh that we just had in ZBrush, except the decimated version. Looking around. It has all the detail and silhouette that we need, which is something very important to keep in mind when decimating a mesh. You don't want to decimate it to the point where it loses important detail. However, you don't want to keep the poly count high to the point where details become unnecessary, such as the wrinkles in the lips. They're not necessary, and if my computer was chugging, there is a way I could get rid of them, which I'm about to show you. I'm going to use the Pro Optimize modifier if I can find it. And uh, there we go. So what the Pro Optimize thing, Pro Optimize modifier does is basically the same thing as Decimation Master does. It'll calculate the number of verts you have and figure out ways to crunch it down into less vertices. The reason why I didn't use this over Decimation Master is because 3D Studio Max has a hard time with high resolution measures. So if I would have dumped that 600,000 poly mesh inside of here, it would have taken forever to calculate this. However, since this mesh is only 25,000, it's pop it calculates it quickly and I'm able to bring down the size. However, we don't really need it since my computer is not chugging, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off and play with the object properties real quick. This is something that I personally like to do when I'm start to, when I'm about to retopologize, like to turn off show frozen in gray and turn on back face color. Um reason I turn off show frozen in gray is it's just a habit but back face culling I turn that off because I like to turn my high resolution meshes into um, x-rays or into view them in x-ray mode my bad and with back face culling on I get it looks it becomes annoying to look at so we got our lips and 
one other thing, as you can tell, it didn't export the way I thought it would. It's symmetrical, but it's not symmetrical on the point zero axis. So we don't want to move the mesh because that's going to screw us up later. So what I did is used one of Neil Blevins' meshes to move the pivot point to the center of the object. You could do it the long this way too, where you just go over here and change the pivot point to the center of the object. You know, there's more than one way to skin a cat, but I, I've kind of gotten used to using Neil Blevins' Max scripts. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google Neil Blev Blevins. I think I'm saying that right. Should be saying that right. So now that the lips are centered, gonna go up here to the freeform panel where most of our retopology magic is gonna be taking place. On where you see the word grid, click the arrow next to it and click on where it says surface. This will allow us to control our mesh and put them on top of a surface such as this. So we've chosen the lips as our surface of choice. And we're gonna change the offset to help us better see the mesh around it. If we change it to zero, it's, it might be hard to see. Also, very important, create a new object. If you don't create a new object, you're only going to be adding to your current mesh, which is not what you want to do. So very important, make sure you click new object. So now that we've got that out of the way, we're going to start with my favorite tool for starting retopology, and that is the topology tool. All these tools I won't explain in detail, but if you hover over them, you can see a short explanation of what they do and how to use them. So now I've got that taken care of, I'm going to try to start drawing lines. Okay, for some reason the offset. Um, let me back out a bit. Not sure why it does this. If you get an error, just switch to another tool and then go back to the main one. So now topology lines are working. And basically the way this works is you just draw quads on whatever surface you want to. When I was telling my friends about this, they were like, oh cool, I could draw on my Wacom tablet. And I'm like, no, because it wouldn't make a lot of sense if you did. Just use your mouse. It's a lot quicker, a lot cleaner. You don't need a whole bunch of artistic flow here. It's just the fun process of laying out polygons on top of another mesh. So as you can see, I draw my lines on top of the mesh and the quad appears. Real quick too, um, while making, while retopologizing, I like to turn on display edge faces so I can see the edges and change the color of the mesh to a dark blue hint so it's easier to see what I'm doing. And change the high res mesh to an x-ray right now so I can see through it and also give it its own layer. The reason I give the mesh its own, the high res mesh its own layer is so I could freeze it or unfreeze it without having to right click all the time. I'm going to give the low res mesh its own layer too. Frozen on accident. Alright, so now we can continue working. So we have this one quad laid out on the lip. Good start. But as you can tell, we're going to need a few more quads. What I like to do, and again, this is a personal preference, is we got to first line up this mesh with the high res mesh. Remember how it wasn't lined up before? We got to align this mesh, the new mesh's pivot point to the high res mesh's pivot point. So in order to do that, all you got to do is affect the pivot point and align the pivot point up with the pivot point of the other mesh. It's, it's really not that hard. It's quick, easy to do, and um, this will help us avoid errors in the future. Last time I did this, I forgot to do this entirely, and my mesh got sent back to ZBrush offset, which is very bad for retopologizing. <coughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so now that everything is perfectly set up, gonna start topologizing, retopologizing. Keep forgetting to say that. So we need to add enough edge loops to conform to the rest of these lips. There are quite a few tools to do that, but my favorite one to use is the symmetry. And the symmetry isn't really for retopologizing, it just helps me get up a better visual of what I'm doing. You don't have to use this, but again, personal preference. And be careful when using the freeform tools to not have any of the sub elements selected because it makes things kind of annoying. Also, another warning, be careful when using symmetry. I'll, I'll explain more later on, but symmetry isn't the end all be all of um, this. You gotta go back and double check stuff. As you can tell, my offset is uh, 
2.2 and it's, again it's relative to the size of the mesh if you're uh, if you feel like your polygons are too close to your high res mesh just change your offset and that will help it out if you feel like they're too far i don't see how that could happen but you, i think this could go into negatives i've never had a need for it though so the next tool after topology that i use for the mesh is extend and extend lets me drag out from an edge to create a polygon while holding shift down this is pretty good and pretty easy for just creating more polygons along the way. We use the drag tools to drag vertices so that they can form along to the edge, to conform along to the, the high poly mesh. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to drag these all the way out here around the corner of the mouth so that will encompass the whole top lip. Now naturally, we're going to need to add a few more edge loops. So I was going to add them the old school way, but totally forgot about the swift loops so I'm just going to click and add a few loops in here again I, I love retopologizing in Max because I'm kind of familiar with the tools so if you if you have 3D code then by all means go ahead and do that but if you got Max and you're comfortable with it then this is the way I'd recommend so using drag I'm just going to move these verts along to make the top lip I'm going to try to get in there as far as I can Alright, so now we have part of the, most of the top lip done. But as you can tell, the middle kind of needs an edge loop because it's not conforming to the entire shape of it. So we just add an edge loop real quick. And without even like putting that much effort into it, all we got to do is really click and drag on the edge and it conforms. So we don't have to press, place these precisely. We can just click, drag, and done. So that's the top lip. In the next part of the video, I'll be finishing up the bottom lip and showing you how to reproject this back in Max. But if you if you know what you're doing, then you could probably just go on ahead without me. <laughs> just fine tuning some little nitpicks here. And I think that is all. So stay tuned for the next video.